as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns, present the challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. Hun King! Hun, you husky! Gold. Gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. With Quaker Puff wheat and Quaker Puff rice, cue the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog Yukon King as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Stand by, boys and girls. Here's good news. Listen, everyone. Here's your opportunity to get a swell new miniature model farm. This complete model farm is made up of 46 detail scale models in all. That's 46 keen-looking different models of farm buildings, farm equipment, and farm animals. And best of all, Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice are offering you this complete Quaker model farm at no extra cost. You send no money, box tops, or coupons. There's nothing to write in for. There's no waiting. That's right. There's no delay, no waiting. We'll tell you how to get this complete new Quaker model farm just a little bit later in this program. Stand by for details. Snow fell softly through the darkness of the small settlement of Cree's Crossing, piling a thick blanket on the roofs of the cabins and blotting out the few remaining lights that shone through the small windows. Most of the town slept, and nobody saw the figures of three men as they stood near the office of the Foster Mining Company. Now remember, don't take any chances. There'd be at least two men guarding the place. If they give any trouble, shoot. Sure, Curly. Me and Jake will do this job just the way we did the other one. Yeah, I still think we're crazy to do a job this close to our hideout. There'll be Mounties buzzing around here like flies. Let them buzz. They'll never think we're staying near here. It's not logical. That's just what I mean. It's not logical. I think... Jake, you're not supposed to think. You do what I tell you. And when we get the gold, we go back to the dog team and home by way of the ridge. They can't track us from there. The wind blows the trail as clean as a whistle. Yeah, Curly's right. We don't have to worry... This snow is thick enough to cover tracks right from here. You two ready? Sure. Yeah, Come on, sir. then. And keep your guns handy. Inside the office of the Foster Mining Company, two men, fully armed, were putting pouches of gold dust into a big iron safe. I'll be glad to keep this locked up. We can relax and have a smoke. Yeah, here's the last of it. Put up your hands and don't touch that safe. Why, what? Curly you... Smith. Oh, so you know me, huh? Oh! oh. That'll take care of you. Why, you dirty... Takes care of him. Nice work, Pete. Now, come on. Take all the gold you can carry and let's get out of here. Right, right. As Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police entered the office of Inspector Grayson two mornings later, a look of concern came over the inspector's face. Oh, good morning, Sergeant. Morning, sir. I just got your message. King isn't with you. There's nothing wrong with him, is there? No, sir. I was all ready to start north when I received your message, so I left him in charge of the dog team. Well, I'm relieved to hear that. I consider that dog as valuable to the force as any man. Anything happened to him could be a real loss to us. I agree with you, sir. Oh, uh, I'm glad I caught you before you left, Sergeant. Your orders are changed. Changed, sir? Well, I thought you said Curly Smith's gang took precedence over anything else. It does. And this concerns them. There's been another big robbery, and it's their work. They seem to have chosen a different territory this time. So you're going south instead of north, Sergeant. This job was done at Cree's Crossing near Bear Valley. You're sure it was Curly Smith's gang, sir? Yes. Two guards were shot, one fatally. The other one recognized Curly Smith. They robbed the office of the Foster Mining Company. You know old Jim Foster, don't you? Mm, yes, sir. I saw him a while back here in Dawson. I was all excited about his daughter bringing his grandson up to see him. Well, they must be there now, and that's probably why Jim wasn't in the office himself. He spends most of his time there, usually. I'll get started right away, Inspector. I'm depending on you and that dog of yours to get Curly Smith, Sergeant. We'll do our best, sir. Come along, boy. 
Two days later, Sergeant Preston, with his big dog, King, beside him, knocked at the door of the large, sprawling cabin of Jim Foster. The old man himself opened the door. Good evening, Mr. Foster. Sergeant Preston, come in, come in. You know, I... I've been fretting like a wet hen for fear they wouldn't send you. Do you mind if King comes in? I certainly not. Bring him in. One way. Hello there, King. <laughs> you know, King is half the reason I wanted you. <laughs> Take off your pocket, sir. Thanks. Oh, uh, this is my young grandson, Jimmy. Oh? Uh, Jimmy, come here and shake hands with Sergeant Preston. He's the best Mountie in the Yukon Territory. Hello, Sergeant Preston. Hello, Jimmy. And Grandpa told me all about you and King. He's a wonderful dog. Oh, would you care if I petted him? Go right ahead, Jimmy. King likes children. King, shake hands with Jimmy. <laughs> oh, King, you're almost as high as my shoulder. Fine grandson you have there, Mr. Foster. Yes, I don't mind telling you he's the apple of my eye. His full name is Jim Foster Craig. I, uh... I couldn't get down to Seattle this year, so my daughter brought him up to visit me. You know, I, I won't let a year go by without seeing him. Oh, hey, sit down, Sergeant. Sit Thanks, down. Jim. Now, uh, about this robbery. Well, see, I'm, uh, I'm offering $500 reward for the capture of those crooks. Help! What's wrong? What's it? Dora, what in thunder is wrong with you? Let go of, take him out. Take that horrible animal King, away. come here, boy. Here, fella. Oh, Jimmy, darling, are you all right? Why, sure, Mom. Oh, King's a nice dog. Oh, we were just playing. Please, sir, put that animal outside. Now, Dora, don't be silly. Put him out, I say. Why, of course. Come on, King. Outside, fella. Yeah. Dora, I, I'm downright ashamed of you. I forgot all about your silly fear of dogs. I thought you were old enough to have more sense. Oh, they're awful. I won't have one near Jimmy. Oh, no. Especially these horrible wild animals here in the Yukon. But King is gentle, Mom. Oh, you'd like to... I'm, uh, I'm sorry, Sergeant Preston. This isn't a very nice way for you to meet my daughter. Uh, Dora, this is Sergeant Preston. How do you do, Mrs. Craig? How do you do, Sergeant? I'm sorry, but I've always been deathly afraid of dogs. One bit me when I was little. Oh, bit you nothing. Well, that, that was a playful pup trying to be friendly, and he just scratched your arm. You were too little to remember. Sometimes an experience like that makes a lasting impression. It may sound foolish to you, but I can't help it. King wouldn't hurt Jimmy. He likes children. I don't want Jimmy to go near a dog. Come on, Jimmy, it's your bedtime. Oh, Mom, can I just go to the door and say goodnight to King? He'll think I don't like him or something being put outside like that. Come to bed, Jimmy. Andy, you'd better go to bed too, Dora, because as soon as you go out, we're letting King back in. Oh, very well. I'm tired anyway. Good night, Father. Yeah. Good night, Sergeant Preston. Good night, Mr. Good Craig. night. Good night, Sergeant. Please tell King how sorry I am. I'll do that, son. Good night. <laughs> yeah. Now, uh, you get King back in here, Sergeant. Uh, I swear I've never been so embarrassed. That's all right, Mr. Foster. Come on in, King. Now, uh, about that robbery, Mr. Foster. That's it. Well, uh, they stole about $15,000 worth of gold. They didn't leave any tracks. I guess the snow covered them. But we know it was Curly Smith. Because Hank recognized him just before he was shot. Hank said he was positive about it. The following day, Sergeant Preston began a systematic search for clues that might lead to Curly Smith's capture. He questioned every trapper and prospector on the trails leading away from the town. That afternoon, Jimmy, in hopes of seeing King again, had walked to the center of town and was standing in front of the trading post when he noticed a big dog hitched alone to a small sled. Jimmy walked toward it. Hello there, old fella. <laughs> Golly, I wish I had a dog like you that I could hitch up to a sled like this. Oh, here, here's a piece of dried meat. Gosh, did you swallow it whole? I brought it for King. But if you're that hungry, I better give the rest of it to you. You feed dog? Oh, yes, it's yours. Huh? Oh, wait, I'll help you put those bundles on the sled. <clears throat> It must be fun to have a dog that pulls the sled. You got dog? No. I wish I did. Is it fun to ride on the sled with him pulling it? <laughs> you uh, you want ride? I take. Would you really? 
Who will you let me ride on your sled? My village, long way from here. Dark comes soon. Oh, I could go part way with you and walk back. Then it wouldn't waste any time. That's good. You get on sled. Oh, thanks. Oh, gee, this is going to be fun. Must go. Must. Oh, oh, Must. Oh, 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 oh. The thrill of riding on the dog sled made Jimmy heedless of time. And he stayed on it even when the Indian boy turned off the main trail. They had ridden about three miles, and darkness was beginning to creep over the valley when Little Fox stopped his dog. Oh, oh, girl. Oh, 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 oh. Why are you stopping? Get, get dark. Snow come. Take long time, you get town. Oh, I guess you're right. It is getting dark, isn't it? Thanks for the ride, Little Fox. Huh. You know how to get back? Oh, sure. I'll find my way home, all right. It gets dark so soon up in this country in winter. I forgot about that. In summer, stay light all night. I had lots of fun, little fox. Uh, do you come to town very often? No. My village, far from here. Well, thanks a lot for the ride. I hope I see you again. Me go now. Must go. <laughs> Goodbye. As little fox disappeared in the falling snow, Jimmy turned homeward. It was hard to follow the trail in the fading light, and the snow was smoothing out the tracks rapidly. As it grew darker, he could barely see them at all. And then suddenly, from the woods far ahead, he heard the blood-chilling cry of a timber wolf. <gasps> Jimmy stopped quickly, his heart pounding, and his face draining pale with fright. A, a wolf? It was a wolf? Terror-stricken, he turned and ran blindly to the left of the trail, toward the half-remembered wall of rocks that he had seen before the snow had begun to fall. I've got to get away. In his haste, he stumbled and fell, oh. but pulled himself to his feet and hurried on as he heard the dreadful sound again. We'll continue our story in just a moment. Now, listen carefully. Yes, listen. Here's how you can get the brand new Swell Quaker Model Farm. That's a complete farm in miniature, made up of 46 detailed scale models in all. What's more, these different models are yours at no extra cost. And they're yours right away, without delay. And here's what's fun. You build these exciting models yourself. Models like a big red barn with a sliding door. Think of it. You get a big red barn with a sliding door. A windmill that actually turns. These models are really skillfully designed. Think of it. Doors and windows of buildings open and shut. And you get important farm equipment, too, like a tractor. You get everything. Cattle shed, hen house, hired man's house, and even a roadside stand. What's more, these exciting models don't cost a single extra penny. Here's all you do to get them. Every single one of these models come on special new packages of Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. Yes, every model comes right on the new packages of Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. There are eight different new packages in all. And you get as many as six different models on a single package. Every package has at least two or more models of farm animals. Animals like Rocky the rooster. <laughs> Bossy the cow. And Topsy, your own Shetland pony. Talk about fun. And say, all models are really easy to build, too. They're pre-cut and scored. No paste or glue is necessary, and models stand by themselves. Act fast. Start building your Quaker model farm right away. There's no waiting, nothing to send in, no money, box tops, or coupons. These models come on new packages of Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. The swell-tasting breakfast cereals shot from guns. And don't forget, different models come on eight different packages. Each and every package is a gold mine of fun, games, and excitement. And they're waiting for you right now on your grocer's shelf. Ask for Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. You'll find these swell new models only on packages of Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. Your grocer now has them. So hurry, there's no delay. Start your Quaker model farm right away. Now to continue our story. It was later that evening, and Jimmy's mother, her face pale and tear-stained, rose anxiously as the door opened and Jim Foster, her father, came in. Father, you... 
You didn't find Jimmy? No, Dory, he's not in town. The boys are all searching for him, though. They'll find him now, don't worry. They won't find him. I know they won't. He's lying somewhere frozen to death. I know it. No, we're not giving up. We'll find him. I'm going out again. I just came back to get another letter. I thought he'd gone to your office this afternoon and, and would come home with you. Otherwise, I'd have looked for him when it got dark. No, honey, it's not your fault. Don't blame yourself for this. Now, stop worrying. Well, you're worrying. I can see it in your face. I wish Sergeant Preston would come back. He could help us. Where is he? He went out on the South Trail today, trying to find someone who might have seen Curly Smith and his gang. Oh, he cares about Curly Smith. I want my son. Hey, I, I told the boys to send Sergeant Preston here just as soon as he gets to town. Now, uh, I'm going out again. If he comes, you tell him. <laughs> and there's Preston now. Sergeant Preston, come in, come in. The boys told me about Jimmy, Mr. Foster. Yes, he's been gone for hours, Sergeant. We have no idea where to look. I have some good news for you. Good news? A trapper came into town just before I did, after you left the trading post. He saw Jimmy on the North Trail this afternoon, riding a dog sled with an Indian boy. Riding a dog sled? But I've been on the North Trail looking for him, eh? Went out with Dick Jarvis on his dog sled. We must have gone at least five miles. Well, they must have turned off the main trail somewhere. Oh, he's lost. You'll never find him. You won't be able to tell where he left the trail. I think we can, Mrs. Craig. Oh. Give me something Jimmy's been wearing, a sweater or something. All right. Here's one of his flannel shirts. Will this do? Very nicely. What's that for? This will give King a scent. Well, your dog might be able to follow the scent if Jimmy was on foot, but he was right the dog sled. King will pick up the scent of the boy and follow it to where Jimmy got onto the sled. From there, King will have to follow the scent of the dog. You mean that that dog will be able to find my son? I hope so, Mrs. Craig. You see, dogs aren't just vicious animals. At times, they come in handy. I'm, uh, I'm coming with you, Sergeant. You'd better bring that extra lantern, Jim. We may need it. Right. Sergeant, please bring him back. We'll do our best. Oh, dear God. Please let them find him. <laughs> Curly Smith would have been pleased to know that the hunt for him had been temporarily abandoned. But even without knowing it, he was relaxed and carefree. He sat at a poker game with Pete and Jake in their small cabin that was hidden securely in a pocket of steep rocky cliffs in the mountain. It's your deal, Pete. <laughs> Maybe you can deal yourself four aces and get some of your money back. I got plenty of time to get it back. Maybe by the time we leave here, you won't have any gold to carry out. Oh, think so? <laughs> How long you plan for us to stay in this pigeonhole anyway, Curly? Till you get tired of looking for us. Maybe all winter. All oh, winter? What's wrong with that? We got the place staked with food and supplies. You can play poker. You'll be warm and you can eat. What more do you want? Well, I feel as if I was in a trap. Walled in with rocky cliffs. <laughs> We're walled in, all right. Since we blasted the trail leading from the ridge, the only way in or out of here is through that narrow gap in the rocky wall. And nobody can find that, even if he's right on top of it. You found it, didn't you? Oh, sure, but only by following the tracks of a mountain goat. You know, I'll never forget hunting him. I thought he'd walk right through the cliff and close it up behind him. Uh, but when I came up... Come to on, it, I figured... pick up your cards. We don't want to hear that again. Uh, hey. Help. Did you hear something? Yeah, I thought I did. Help. Hey, it's somebody yelling. Get your guns. Blow that light out, Jake. But there's somebody yelling for help. That yeah, may be a trick to get us out of here. I'll open the door easy. Stand to one side. It's a kid. Here we are, kid. Come on in. Tired. Oh, he fell down. I'll get him. I better light the lantern. Oh, wait a minute. I'll light the lantern. Before I do, yeah. you get out and circle down to that opening in the cliff. Now? See if any oh. tracks beside the boys are there. Yeah, sure, Curly. Just a kid, Curly. Yeah. You'll be all right now. Just leave him over here. Oh. Right, just a minute. There, boy. Oh. Now sit down beside the stove and get warm. Hurry up with that light, Curly. Good trick. No one his age would be out here alone. I'm bolting this door. I'll fix him a cup of hot soup. It was coming after me. It was getting closer. What was coming after you? A wolf. I heard it. A wolf? I, I ran, and, and then I got lost. Are you telling the truth? The truth? How did you get out here in the first place? I mean, how did you get to the place where you heard the wolf? An Indian boy gave me a ride on his sled. What do you think, Curly? Yeah, there's an Indian village about five miles north of here. I, I was walking back to town, but then it got dark. 
when I heard the wolf, I, I remembered these rocks. And I thought if, if I could climb up somewhere, he couldn't get me. Ah, that wolf was probably miles away. It sounded awful. It was so long before I got to the rocks. And then I couldn't find a place to climb. It was just like a wall. And then all of a sudden I fell into an opening. I crawled through it, and then I saw the light from under the crack of your door. <laughs> all the rotten luck. See, uh, I thought it was the best luck I ever had. That you, Jake? What's the idea of locking me out? That's fine. Nothing but the boy's tracks coming through that opening. He's telling the truth, then. Why shouldn't I tell the truth? Now, look, who are you? Somebody from Crease Crossing? I'm Jimmy Craig. My grandpa lives in Crease Crossing. His name is Foster, Jim Foster. Jim Foster? Why, why are you all looking so funny? Why, uh, we, uh... <clears throat> Did your grandpa know where you were going today? No, I guess I should have told him. He and Mom will be awful worried. Could you take me home, do you think? Uh, well, sure, sure. Look, you better lay down over there in the corner and sleep for a while. You're all tired out. Yeah, yeah, kid. We'll wake you up and take you home later when you're rested enough to travel. But Mom and Grandpa, I guess I am pretty tired. Come on, I'll cover you uh, up. All right. For an hour, the men argued in low voices as Jimmy slept in the corner. Then Curly stood up. That's the way it's got to be. You cut the cards and see who does it. Well, I don't like it. Boy, that age. Maybe you'll be lucky, Jake. Don't start squawking till we cut the cards. Low man is it. Cut him, Jake. A king. You're next, Pete. Four. Go on, Curly. You're it. It's a deuce. Yeah, it's just as well. You two might have got cold feet at the last minute. After all, we got to stay in this cabin for a long time. We can't be bothered by having the kid around. I'll take him outside. In the meantime, the great dog, King, had followed the scent of the Indian's dog until he reached the place where Jimmy had left the sled to travel on foot. There, King recognized the boy's scent. He seemed to know just what he was supposed to do and led the way for Sergeant Preston and old Jim Foster. They reached a point where tall walls of rock seemed to block the trail. There, Foster grew skeptical. Are you sure that dog knows what he's doing, Sergeant? Jimmy wouldn't be walking along here. Surely he'd know this wasn't the way home when he got to these rocks. King knows what he's doing, Jim. Where is he? Where is King? Why, uh, there's a crack in this cliff. He won't throw it. Come on. Say, it opens into a clearing. How in thunder did he ever find it? Wait a minute, Jim. King, back here, boy. Gee, there's a cabin. Who'd think of building a cabin back here? It's a perfect hideout. It was just at that moment that the door of the cabin opened, and the Mountie and Jim Foster saw the outline of a man carrying something. The door shut, and then suddenly they heard the voice of Jimmy in the darkness. Gee, that's Jimmy, Sergeant. Get him, King. King raced toward the figures in the darkness. In a few seconds, he had covered the ground to the place where Curly held the struggling figure of Jimmy. Come on, Jim. Right. As the man raised his arm to strike, the big dog launched himself through the air, and the man and beast rolled together in the snow. Get away! Help! Jake, Pete, help! Get away! All right, King. Come on, boy. Foster. No. Watch this, man. Someone's coming out of that cabin. I'll get them. All right, Sergeant. All right, I get a good one. Curly, Curly, where are you? Oh. Look out, Pete. Come over there. As the Mountie approached the cabin, Pete and Jake had stepped aside from the door, and a burst of flame came from the darkness. As a bullet whined past his head, Sergeant Preston's gun spoke quickly in response. The Mountie threw himself to the ground as another shot came from the corner of the shack. Jake lay slumped to the wall of the cabin, holding his shoulder, but Pete, protected by the corner, watched for the flame that would tell him where the Mountie was when he shot from the darkness. However, he didn't see the shadow that crept toward him from the other direction. Preston fired, and as Pete raised his gun to answer, the shadow sprang. Hey, don't you help my hand! Take him off, Curly! Jake! Oh, King, good work, boy. I have his gun. Watch him, King. Foster, you and Jimmy all right? Yep, we're all right, Sergeant. I got a gun in this man's back, and if he makes a wrong move, I'd let him have it. I'd like to do it anyway. He's Curly Smith. He, he was going to kill me. Ah, shut up. You're under arrest, Curly, you and your friends. 
One of them has a bullet in his shoulder. I'll see what I can do for him, and we'll take you all back to town. Later that night, back at Jim Foster's cabin, Jimmy, too excited to sleep, sat beside the big stove telling his mother what had happened. Sergeant Preston and Jimmy's grandfather listened to the boy's story, too. They thought I was asleep on the cot, but I was listening to them. They planned to kill me by hitting me on the head with something. Then they were going to carry me somewhere and, and make it look as if I'd fallen. They said if you didn't find me soon, someone was liable to find their hideout looking for me. Oh, no. Hey, those dirty yellow coyotes. Curly Smith was a dangerous man. That's why I yelled when Curly started to carry me out of the cabin. And then, Mom, just as Curly was going to hit me, King came jumping right at him and threw him to the ground. Oh, King. <laughs> King, how can I ever thank you? Hey, Grandpa, look. Mom is hugging King. Mom is hugging a dog. <laughs> well, I never thought I'd live to see this. Why, I, I guess I forgot he was a dog. I, I guess King has changed my mind about this. <laughs> Please, Sergeant, huh? you and King are going to get that reward for capturing Curly Smith. We're not allowed to accept money, Mr. Foster. Anyway, it really belongs to Jimmy. He was the one who found Curly Smith. <laughs> No use giving him the money. Jimmy's going to get all of it anyway someday. I know a better reward for Jimmy than money. What's that, Sergeant? I know a man who has some very nice puppies for sale. Oh, golly. Grandpa, Mom, do you think we could... Would you let me? (laughs) Of course, dear. You're going to have the best pup we can buy. Oh, gee. I'm glad I got lost. (laughs) It was worth it. A pup. Maybe you'll be like King. (laughs) Yeah. If he is, Jimmy, you couldn't have a finer dog. King says thanks for the compliment. And I say thanks to King. The case is closed. In just a moment, Sergeant Preston will give you a preview of Wednesday's program. Hurry, hurry, hurry to your grocer. Your grocer now has special new model farm packages of Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. Remember, there are eight different new packages. And you get as many as six different exciting models of farm buildings, farm equipment, and farm animals on a single package. There's no waiting, no extra cost. So shake a leg. Get in on the fun. Start building yourself a swell model farm today. Tomorrow, sure. Remember, 46 keen detail scale models are yours now at your grocer's. And they're yours at no extra cost. Yes, they're yours for the asking when you ask for delicious Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Fred Flowerday, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at this same time by Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice, the breakfast cereal shot from gun. Listen Wednesday when Sergeant Preston and Yukon King... Meet the challenge of the Yukon in the adventure, Tough Decision. It certainly was a tough decision. King and I were trailing a murderer by the name of Winslow. When we found him, my uniform was concealed by a parka. I knew Winslow would shoot to kill if I threw off my parka and revealed my identity. Yet I had to get rid of that parka to save King's life. What would you have done under those conditions? Be sure to hear this exciting story Wednesday. Till then, this is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Puff.